Okay, today I'm going over Injustice. That's right, it is God's Amongst Us. Among Us? Close enough to count. Um, it's for the Wii U. It does come out on the 360 and the PS3 also. However, I like the Wii U. Um, it's kind of nice. It A lot of people ranted and you know, complained, oh, it doesn't have off-screen play. That's because the entire time you're playing, it has off-screen play. Uh, it always mirrors directly onto your gamepad, unless you tell it not to. In which case, it will tell you, and this is why it's nice, it gives you your character's movesets. Um, clearly, I would not be able to get very good footage of that, because I'm an idiot and don't know how to record what's on the gamepad. And I don't care to find out, so you're just going to have to trust me on it. Um, initial thoughts? It's good. I like it. It's it's a lot of fun. It's keeping my attention. And, uh, can't really complain too much about it. But, I guess, you know, I'll see what I can get more of by the time this is over. Injustice is the newest rendition of DC's attempt to actually have a good video game. And it actually succeeds in my opinion. Um, it's done by the same people who did the last Mortal Kombat game, which was Mortal Kombat vs. DC, imagine that. And, uh, the bonuses for Walmart came with it. <laughs> Unless you have the Wii U. Because that game was not released. Can't tell you how annoying that is, but we'll get past that. Um, you let tree with this lovely little screen you turn on. Um, the archives are where you will unlock things or just keep track of what you already have unlocked. Um, it's got nifty little features where you can actually boost how much XP you win from points, depending on how many cards you have. Um, and, you know, it's just a little way to boost your level and stuff like that, so you can unlock more things that much faster. Check out character profiles, concept art, all the fun stuff that you normally get, and then costumes, which are unlocked with the armory keys. Trust me, you're gonna want to unlock those before stupid concept art. Um, the multiplayer has your typical versus or online. You know, nothing too fancy about that. But it's fun? I don't know, I've only done a couple online matches, I'm not really the biggest fan of it. But that's because there's always cheaters already. Um, the chapters are organized nicely for story mode. Unfortunately, it's a bit short. But it's organized pretty good by characters, so you can just jump through to the character you want to play. It'll force you to play through about half the characters. Um, not too many of the villains, I'm quote unquote, you get to play as. However, the Joker, you do. And rightly so. Um, for the backstory, you're probably going to want to watch or read the comic. It's online, digital. You can buy it, but it's easier to just read it online. Um, it takes place in an alternate universe, if that first little paragraph didn't, you know, trigger for you. Um, Metropolis has been blown up, Joker really did some nasty ass shit. He, uh, used Joker Venom to confuse Superman into thinking that he was fighting Doomsday, basically. Um, when in reality it was a pregnant Lois, to whom he had attached a trigger device for a nuclear bomb. Nuclear. Wow, I can't believe I just did that. A nuclear bomb, which completely annihilated Metropolis. There's nothing left. It does not exist anymore. So he ends up doing this. I think this scene really shows the diverse differences that somebody can go through when a subject as drastic as this happens. I mean, he brutally... He doesn't show it in, in this game, but in the comic book it, he destroys the new. Where'd you get it? What? Arm what? through his chest and he is dead. There is no recovery. It also shows the difference between Batman and Superman. But later on, Bruce does admit that he may have been the same get way if him. something had happened to him. I'm handling this. And uh, there he goes into a pretty in-depth conversation between Batsy and Clark in the Batcave that you don't see unless you're in the comic. Please read it, you will get much more in depth about all this.
And even after this, the Joker's still laughing. My son. Where's Krypton now, Metropolis? People you love tend to blow up, don't they? Huh? Superman, don't! Ah! <laughs> That's why I like you, Superman. You're much more gullible than... You think you can have a family? That locking me up will magically reform me. And they'll be But let's safe. move on to the gameplay now. Alright, so what we have here is your standard, you know, character select screen, very reminiscent to Marvel vs. Capcom, actually, in my opinion. Um, heroes on the left, villains on the right, and it's it's sort of matched up hero to villain, hero to villain. I mean, Nightwing doesn't often go up against the Joker crew because he's in, you know, Bloodhaven. Green Arrow. But, uh, the Joker. It, it's pretty one-to-one. -one. A nice variety of stages. All of them can be blown into another one, so... Wayne Manor goes into the foyer of Wayne Manor, and the Batcave ends up in another part of the Batcave. It, it, it's kind of nice. It's a nice little variety to little stuff. You know, it, it adds a nice little element of, I'm going to throw you through the wall and give you some extra damage. Very Mortal Kombat-esque. Um, it's got nice little intros for every character. And it's kind of nice. I mean, sometimes they interact with each other. Sometimes it's just your uh, standard talking like this. Um, the actual movement is a little sketchy. I mean, it's left-right. I mean, it is Mortal Kombat. You can't move around in a three-dimensional fashion. Um, during this, I'm actually using the gamepad, and I would prefer and recommend playing it at all times. The... Pro Controller is, I'm not going to say laggy, but it's not shaped in a friendly way towards fighting games. Um, I don't know what it is, I prefer the non-angled D-pad that the game controller, or the uh, gamepad gives you. It's just a little easier to pull off the moves, and you're not sliding for the wrong direction on accident. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have hit the wrong direction when I was using my Pro Controller, and I didn't when I was on the gamepad. Um, I'm actually not doing too well this time. I do enjoy using Green Arrow. He is my most used character. Not necessarily my favorite. I mean, maybe he is. He's not my favorite DC hero, but I do enjoy his character set a lot. I like his combos, I like his attitude, and I think he's a good character to play as. He's, uh... Mostly mid-range, but he can handle close range, and if you use his arrows properly, which I'm not in this fight, um, you can actually pull off some really good long-distance stuff. You may have saw earlier that I did a super move. It's pretty cool. Um, you fill up your little charge bar at the bottom. It's, you know, just one powerful move that every character has is different. Uh, this is a wager. Basically, it's a life-saving move that you can either get health if you're the defensive, or you can do more damage if you're the offensive. Each character can only do it once per battle when they're on the second bar of health. Um, you basically wager, you bet, um, each one of your little bar segments up to four times. And say he wagers one bar and you have none. Well, clearly he wins. Say he wagers two bars and you have four. If you choose three, then you'll get to hurt him a little more. And if you choose all four of your bars to wager, you will do a ton more damage to him. Clearly I did not win this time. It was my bad. However, I gotta say, I'm kinda glad I didn't win because Joker looks pretty cool. Throughout the whole fight, they do develop battle damage, and you can see it best at the end of the fight. Um, in Joker's case, he gets his cloak badly ripped. Time this is what it would look like battle. if I had won with Green Arrow, which I did after this battle. Um, very pretty, very much fireworks. I gotta love it. Love me some Green Arrow. 
the scripting in this game is top notch. Every character stays true to the comic book in just the right way. Um, Hal Jordan, though serious, is a little bit of a prick, and he makes it well known. Um, both Green Lantern and, spoiler, Yellow Lantern, which is the bad guy side. Um, remember, parallel universe, this happens. Um, it's very post-apocalyptic. Superman has lost everything. His wife, his child, his city, his hope. It's gone. So he takes over. Yeah, he makes one Earth, which is what he calls the planet. Um, you never hear it from his point of view, but you see it in his face. You hear it in the sound of his determination, as well as flat out saying it from other characters. Look, this is what happened. I can understand. I would probably do the same thing. But there's also other characters like Shazam and The Flash who are on Superman's side. They don't feel quite the same after a while, and they change. Some for the good, some for the... Uh, doesn't work out so well. Um, but then the slapstick makes up for it. As dark as that is, there is so much comedy to be seen. The Joker is a prime example, as is Green Arrow. The two of them together are the funniest set of chapters you will go through. There are so many scenes that I could show you, and I'm going to be putting into an, a video later. It's going to have, you know, some Deathstroke, Little Green Arrow, Jordan, clearly the Joker. It's just good, funny stuff. I've finished the game, and I, I keep going back to these scenes because I think it's so funny. And it just contrasts perfectly with the darker settings. Um... You know, here, here's one of my favorite clips from the Joker, and I, I really think you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for the ride. You're a funny guy. Are you sure the old gang lives around here? True, here they could be dead. <gasps> Law-abiding! Bite your tongue. Interesting. My fame precedes me. <laughs> right in the belfry! Please, don't go! Shut it, Clark. Oh, did you hurt your leg? How about a broken neck to go with it? The only problem I am seriously finding with this game, at least when it comes to acting-wise, is the women. Wonder Woman, Hot Girl, Tara Strong, Killer Frost, you all got shortchanged. Horribly. Um, Killer Frost actually doesn't really have that many lines. She just kind of gets smacked around by Green Arrow a couple times. Um, Wonder Woman, you nailed it. You perfect Amazon. It's Wonder Woman. You can't do much with it. It's Wonder Woman. Um, they did kind of turn her into a slut at one point, and I'll get to that later, but for now, and you know, just keep that back burner. My biggest problem with this entire game is Harley. I love her to death. Her character, you know, it's really well developed. It's, you know, nailed on the dot for a version of Harley that is a little beyond what we're used to, but not not negative. Um, she evolves. And it kind of passed for aggressiveness a little bit at one point. Uh, from her trailer, we were given to believe that she had become a full-on hero and seen the lighter side and completely regretted the Joker. This is not true. At all. There's so many problems with Harley. And I'm getting there. Let's begin with her movements. Look at her! High heels, sticking her ass out, popped everything, stumbling around like a doofus. This is not Harley. Harley is comedic relief, yes, but she is not a slut. Which is kind of what I feel like they've gone with with her in this one. Um, 
the prior Harley that you see in the regular universe has a different outfit, clearly, um, and is still attached to Joker, but she doesn't really get many lines, and she gets flat out beaten by the Joker. Like, he, he hits her to get her to shut up and do what he wants. That's not necessarily right. Harley doesn't stand for that often, if at all. Um, but then we have this Harley, which is even more pathetic. You know, from the trailer, she was supposed to have evolved to become a superheroine and see the light of day. But she hasn't, at all. As soon as he comes back, she falls in his arms, and it's back to the same old Harley as always. And she actually says, I feel like myself again. And she is. She is his puppet once again. Um, she does evolve later and realizes the Joker was wrong and that the Joker is a bad thing. But that's not for now. Have we calmed down? It's you. The way you move. The way you... Pummel? Well, yeah. It's the love. You could feel the love, right? I feel like myself again. Joker's dead, but you're... This isn't my Gotham, but I'm the Joker, my dear. Am I your Joker, Harley? Pardon! Oh! Come on, there's some people who gotta meet you. Oh, pardon, 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 pardon. And here you we have Wonder Woman. Time. Like I said... They really, they they did some things to her. Even Superman's just like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this hoe. With us, but of course, I can understand why they did it. They've always had a thing, and in DCU, they had a little more than a thing. Um, go on. I don't like it. I don't like how they very feminized her. That's not Wonder Woman. But the rest of the things they did with Wonder Woman are too Wonder Woman. Just my two cents. I thoroughly enjoyed the various this ain't a cutscene bitch, get out of the way and press A moments. Um, it's very Resident Evil 4. Every character seems to have them at least once per chapter. Some of them are better than others, but every single one of them is very custom to the character. I mean, let's face it, only the Joker is going to use cards, only the Green Arrow is going to shoot Solomon Grundy just because he can. It's a nice little addition, and it gives Joker's you the done. power to either make the battle hard by sucking, or you can hurt them more and make it a little bit easier before you actually get to the main fight. So the Bat Brat joins Superman. Tell me, whose boots are tastier to lick? Batman's a criminal, just like you. Nothing like me. So you're a hero where you come from? Oh no, dear boy. It's just that Batman corrupts young minds while I bash them out of their skulls. All in all, I can't really complain too much. It's not Soul Calibur. <laughs> it will never be Soul Calibur. It's a Mortal Kombat game. But it's a good Mortal Kombat game. Injustice, Gods Amongst Men, us, whatever. I'm tired of dealing with that name. I'm never touching it again, except to play. Um, I think it has its ups and its downs. For a comic book game, it's nerdgasmic. For a fighting game, there's better. It was well scripted, and the finer plot points, as well as slapstick comedy, do make up for the fact that it's it's a little lacking in the actual fighting section. Um, but it's going to keep your attention. It's a lot of fun. You'll go through the storyline in a few hours, unfortunately. But it's good. There's tons of modes after that. There's the online play. There's the star battle missions. Every single character has them, and they're all different. Every It's, it's like its own little mini storyline for every character. Um beyond the main story mode. You know, you can do event battles, 
which change the rules of every fight. It's good stuff. I would recommend it to anybody. Um, I would also recommend the Wii U version. I have tried the other ones, and I'm not really the biggest fan. I like being able to see my moveset without having to pause it. It's just how it is. I mean, inevitably, somebody always pauses and goes, you know what, this ain't working. What the hell am I doing wrong? But it's kind of nice. Um, I would give it... Yeah, I'd say probably about a 7. 7 out of 10 is a good number. Um, and that that's combining the, like, 9 and a half to the nth power out of 10. I would give it, from a nerd perspective, and the more towards 5-ish range, I would give it from a pure fighting perspective. Because, I mean, let's face it, we've seen the Soul Calibur game rule all kind of combat since the uh, PlayStation 1. I mean, Soul Edge didn't make it very far, but as soon as it progressed to Caliber on the Dreamcast, it was balls walls. Um, for a Mortal Kombat game, it is very well done. You know, it didn't have a lot of the mistakes that some of the prior ones did. For a DC game, it's a DC game. It is much better than everything they've done, with the exception of maybe DC Universe. Um, I did miss the fact that Mark Hamill was not the Joker. However, the actor they got was exponentially better than the guy they got to do Lego DC Universe. That one missed it entirely. Um, but Mark Hamill said Arkham City was the last game he was going to do the Joker. He was retiring the role and it's kind of hard to live up to those shoes. I mean, he had embodied the true power of the Joker since early 90s. But he did it right. This guy, he did it right. He didn't try to be Mark Hamill, which is what a lot of people do. He didn't try to be Nicholson. He didn't try to be Heath Ledger. He was just enough crazy and just enough happy with a little bit of homicides thrown in there. Um, Batman did great, but <laughs> this guy's been acting Batman since the 90s, so I mean, he, he's used to it. He knows what he needs to do. Um, Tara Strong was a wonderful addition for Harley. She, she nailed it. I mean, for what she was given, she nailed it. Um, eh, still kind of sketchy on Harley's all-around character. I think they push the limit a little bit, but it didn't really detract because she realized at the end what was going on. And I feel like in that way, it lived up to the trailer. Um, all in all, I love it. I would recommend it. I would play it. I'm going to be playing it in a few hours. You might get drunk footage. You might not. We haven't decided yet. Until then, have yourself a wonderful day, wonderful night, whenever you're watching this. Uh, I will be putting up Pokemon Snap tomorrow after I record a little more because I haven't touched it since last week. Um, yeah. Remember, once a Green Lantern, always a Green Lantern. Isn't that right, Hal Jordan? Later. <laughs>